what kind of PC do you need for good VR gaming, like for playing Veil, for example? Well, if you just want a link to purchase something, links will be in the description below. But for the rest of this video, I'm going to outline all of the things to keep in mind when purchasing a new VR ready PC, such as whether or not you should get a laptop or desktop, what kind of GPU you need, etc. But the first question is, should you be building your own PC or buy one that's pre-built? Most people will tell you it's cheaper and better to build your own PC. Not only do you get the satisfaction of building the machine yourself, you get to customize each and every part to be exactly the way you want it. But all of that is a lot of work. Like, do you really want to spend hours just researching the part and then more hours trying to put the whole thing together and then troubleshooting why it's crashing at startup, etc., etc.? Beyond that, the biggest reason to buy a pre-built PC right now is simply the fact that it's so much easier to get a GPU in a pre-built machine right now. GPUs, or graphics cards, have been nearly impossible to get for two years. You can buy one from a scalper, put in a ton of effort to get one when stores restock, or just buy a pre-built. Whether you're gonna buy a pre-built or building your own, the most important part of your PC for VR gaming is the GPU. Not every PC comes with a graphics card, but it's required for VR gaming. When it comes to GPUs, there's essentially two major competing brands, NVIDIA and AMD. For NVIDIA cards, the newest series is called the 30 series. So any NVIDIA cards that start with a 30 is from this newer generation of cards, such as the RTX 3080, for example. The best price to performance card right now is probably the RTX 3070, but anything higher than an RTX 3060 will work just fine for VR. So that includes the 3060, 3070, 3080, and the top of the line 3090. Now, if you wanna get an older, cheaper card that's not from the newest generation, it just needs to be better than the GTX 1060. If you can, you should try to get one from the latest 30 series generation so that you get all of the newest features and so that it just lasts longer. But as long as you get something that's better than the old GTX 1060, it will work for most VR games. A good budget card that has been popular is the GTX 1660 or the RTX 2060. While I personally prefer NVIDIA cards for some of their extra features that I use as a creator, such as NVENC encoding, AMD also has good cards. Their latest generation is the 6000 series, with the 6700 XT or the 6800 being the equivalent to the NVIDIA RTX 3070. And so right around the best price performance that you can get right now from AMD. Since the GPU is the most important part for a gaming PC, I like to search for a new PC by searching up the GPU that I want. So for example, you could go to Newegg or Amazon and search for the GPU that you think you're gonna want. Then you'll see a list of pre-built PCs with that GPU and some usually minor differences in other features. For example, if I look up a 3070 at the time of making this video, I get a bunch of options starting at the price of around $1,699. If that's too high for your budget, then try looking for a lower card like the 3060. If you have the budget to get something better, then look for cards like the 3080 or 3090. Once you know what GPU is right around in your budget, then you can compare your options based on the other specs available. The next most important part for the PC is the CPU, which is the brain of the computer itself. There are two major CPU competitors, which are Intel and AMD. In most cases, it doesn't matter which company your chip comes from especially if you're getting a pre-built. If you want the absolute best high-end chip possible, I think Intel has the best chip right now as this video is being made. But the two companies are heavy competitors, and so sometimes AMD will have the top of the line best processor, and sometimes Intel will have the best. For most of us, the differences are negligible, and so you'll be just as happy with either chip company. The best way to choose a chip if you're buying a pre-built is to just assume that whatever is coming with the GPU you decided on before, it's gonna be enough for what you need. If you really want to compare different builds, however, just Google one chip versus the other to get a performance comparison. So for example, I found these two PCs with the same GPU, but slightly different chips. So I Googled the two different chips, compared them using the result from benchmark.com, and it looks like based on this graph that this card is better. And so if the chip is the only difference between these two PCs, I'll go with the slightly better chip performance. One other essential spec is the PC RAM. RAM, also known as memory, is the amount of working memory that your PC has to use when it's doing tasks. So think of this as like a desk. The more space you have on the desk, the more tools and things you can have on top of it, and so the more work you can get done more efficiently. For most people, 16 gigabytes of RAM is all you will ever need. Some PCs come with only eight gigabytes of RAM, so just make sure that you're getting at least 16 gigabytes. 
If you do a lot of creative work like video editing, you might benefit from more RAM, but RAM is also super easy and cheap to upgrade. So if all of your options are 16 gigabytes, just stick with that. And then in the future, when you need to add more, you can always add more. The last most important thing for your PC is the actual storage for all of your files and programs. Obviously, you just want as much storage as you can get, but at least one terabyte of storage is a good starting point. And like the RAM, you can always add more for fairly cheap. The main difference in storage is the type of storage. So for example, the fastest type of storage right now is an M.2 NVMe. Slower than that, but still really good, are SSD drives. And the slowest option of all is the old fashioned hard disk drive or HDD, which I do not recommend unless you just need a ton of storage for really cheap. If the pre-built options come with M.2, then definitely go with an M.2 chip. Having faster storage will make your PC boot up faster and will also allow games to open up faster. Outside of all of that, you just wanna make sure that your PC has decent cooling. The best way to determine this is by reading reviews for that build and then looking for anyone talking about cooling specifically. The cooler your PC runs, the longer it's gonna last. You should also make sure that there's enough ports for the kinds of things that you want to do. So for example, some VR headsets require specific inputs, so just make sure that you have all the right inputs for your VR headset. So for example, the Valve Index, the most popular PC VR headset right now, requires a display port and a 3.0 USB port. Most desktop PCs should have all of the ports you need for pretty much any VR headset. But when it comes to laptops, it gets a little bit more complicated. Now, some people might prefer a laptop over a PC for portability or simply if they just don't have a desk at home. A laptop solves these issues, but not without its own downsides. Simply put, a laptop with the same specs won't ever be as fast or as good as the desktop counterpart. Plus, laptops are generally more expensive, have limited inputs, and are prone to overheating. There's just a lot of downsides to a laptop. So despite all of that, should you still get a laptop? If portability is a big thing for you, then go ahead. Just know that you'll be spending more and that it's not gonna perform nearly as well as a desktop with the same specs. I'd also recommend getting a cooling pad for your laptop to help keep it cool when doing heavy VR gaming because laptops are usually really bad with cooling. So with all of that, you should be able to now go out and research some computers and find the best desktop for your price range. Or if you're building your own computer, you should have some basic information to help you start picking out some parts. But if you want an easy answer to what PC you should just buy, some options will be linked down below and we'll do our best to keep those links updated. And if you're interested in finding out which VR headset is the best for you right now, then you can check out this video here.